हलो हाई टू आल वेलकम टू मै चानल नौकरी गलिया ई विश आल दस्पिरेंट्स हू ओवर इज प्रिपेरी फॉर एस एस जेई ओके हू ओवर इज प्रिपेरी फॉर एस एस जेई एक्सामेशन ई विश दम आल दि बेस्ट इनिशियली ओके and today i am going to make this video in order to tell about the importance of ssc je as well as and i am going to solve very important questions with respect to your examination which have been asked many times in the examination point of view okay so let me just brief you or give a glance about the ssc je examination that is for electrical engineering that is for electrical engineering that is we call it as double e okay total number of vacancies this time what they have released is 168 168 number of openings are available only for sssj electrical engineering aspirants and it is a very beautiful job and the salary pay is also very good and it is a handsome salary and moreover that the department the more number of jobs out of 168 the 121 vacancies are there in the central water resource department where you will be having lot of scope with the public and coming towards a important point with respect to this examination is the very starting date for application is they have announced the application or the notification starting date from 28th of march and the last date to submit the application is 18th of april 2024 and examination pattern will be in two papers first is the cpt1 as well as the cpt2 okay two papers will be there in cpt1 as i already mentioned in my complete detailed notification in this channel the first cpt1 will be conducting on 4th or 26th of june okay and the paper will be for 200 questions 200 questions 200 minutes and the questions will be from 50 questions for aptitude 50 questions for general as well as for 100 questions for electrical engineering okay this is the cbt1 paper and cbt2 will be completely and purely on technical that is for electrical engineering will be having electrical engineering and civil students will be having civil to civil engineering subjects okay so and whoever is watching my channel in the very uh, initial time or the first time please do subscribe to my channel so that you guys will be updated to all the videos whatever i am updating are uploading in the channel with respect to the sscj aspect of view okay and from now onwards guys i will be making a videos continuously i mean every day i will be uploading a set of questionnaires which are very important with respect to the sscj examination so please do watch the channel or watch the video completely till the end so that you guys get a very good knowledge and to crack the examination and later you can appreciate me or else you can uh, just give a comment on what the feedback was based on the teaching as well as the content okay so let us proceed guys proceed with the questionnaires so that we will come to know more about the examination pattern Uh, pattern we have we have studied okay pattern we are uh, very well known now what will be the pattern of the examination and the important dates are known and now let us discuss in detail about the questionnaire is what type of questions in ssc je examination has been asked many times okay the first question from the exam point of view was about a material okay before going to this particular question i would like to just give a brief introduction about materials engineering materials are many many number of materials are there there are metals or non metals in which the metals we are going to use 
are all related to the electrical or the physical structure changes or the properties are there characteristics are there you guys need to know about each and every material very specifically in order to choose for particular application okay for particular application the material differs okay so the material have different properties the material will be having different properties for different elements okay for example if i take aluminium if i take aluminium as one of the metal okay or if i take any phosphorus as another element and hydrogen as another element so if you take these three things hydrogen is a gas it's not a metal or a material you can call it as okay but if you consider aluminium as a material okay aluminium as a material what happens aluminium has various properties it is a good conductor of electricity good conductor of electricity but not fast as other conductors i mean uh, the electrical resistivity is not that much uh, stronger i can call or else it is not that much high it has a very low resistivity value electrical resistance is less and very important is the melting point is very low melting point is low guys and very very important is the cost is less so it is economically usable so when you choose a material you have to see about their specific characteristics and then coming towards the specific characteristics if you know then come towards the cost aspect and then look into the market side okay so based on this uh, one of the ma material i have i have told you about a very basic information about one of the material that is aluminium now coming towards the question in question they are asking about the element of electric heater is made of what the element of electric heater is made up of what material see electric heater in the sense the first thing is the material should withstand high temperatures high temperatures it should withstand okay is the first point and material should not lose any properties or the characteristics when it is operating at the higher temperatures that is also a prop good property and it should be a good conductor of heat it should be a good conductor for heat electric heater means it should carry heat right good conductor of heat and the melting point should be very high it should not melt very easily so melting point should be higher and high temperature okay and a very good conductor of heat i mean to sell the degree centigrade so out of the four elements which they have listed in the options there is the first element is the copper copper is good conductor of electricity but bad conductor of heat it won't carry that much heat so we call it as bad conductor of heat so this first property itself is not suitable it is a good conductor of electricity is okay good one but bad conductor of heat is not which would like likable or it is a good for electric heater okay coming towards the steel steel is a bad conductor of heat okay we know that and even it can withstand very high temperatures and even melting point is also high but when you speak about the electricity that is electric heater means it should carry electric current which is very less when compared to the copper or carbon or nichrome okay that is why we call it as steel 
is not that much good for electric heaters okay and similarly the carbon carbon material we use it most of the cases for brushes for carrying very uh, okay good current density because of its current density property that is amps per millimeter square or the meter square mm square we use carbon for carbon brushes and we use carbon for roughing of the surfaces that is like emery paper and use we use carbon for strengthening of the material the percentage of carbon decides the strength of the materials okay the strength of the materials so but for when we speak about the electric heater it is not that much compatible if you pass very high current it will melt easily so this is also not suitable but nichrome is one of the material or the element which can carry very high current and which can is a very good very very good very very good conductor of heat it can withstand very high temperatures guys enormous amount of temperature it can withstand so that is why we choose nichrome as the best material for electric heater okay so electric heaters are usually rated in terms of watts electric heaters are usually rated in terms of watts watt is the power rating keep it in mind watts is the power unit unit of power is watt okay in watts the electric heaters are always in kilowatts 1 kilowatt 2 kilowatt 3 kilowatt it starts from minimum 1 kilowatt and it goes up to 10 kilowatt okay goes up to 10 kilowatt of range okay this is what about the first questionary so let us go to the second one the second question is about 5 into 10 to the power of 16 electrons are passing across the section of conductor in 1 minute and 20 seconds the current flowing is how much see for this type of questions this is actually a problematic question what the given data is given data just note down the number of electrons how many number of electrons are there five times of 10 to the power of 16 electrons are there ele okay number of electrons and the time what they have mentioned is 1 minute 60 uh, 20 seconds sorry 1 minute 20 seconds which is nothing but 1 minute means 60 seconds plus 20 it becomes 80 seconds now they are asking us yes, the current is how much so in order to go with respect to this question first i would like to give you a brief information about the background brief info about current current means it is nothing but a flow of electrons okay flow of electrons in a conductor we call it as a current okay flow of electrons in a conductor is call it as a current and the current unit of current is unit is amperes okay and after telling about the current unit we have to discuss about the ohms law ohms law is majorly dependent on the current so the current flowing in the ohms law or the current flowing in the conductor is directly proportional to the voltage applied and inversely proportional to the resistance so by combining these both you can write it as current is directly proportional to the voltage and inversely proportional to the resistance this is as simple as a a is nothing but the unit of current with respect to voltage and resistance okay so current flowing in a conductor or a material is directly proportional to the voltage and inversely proportional to the resistance but treating the ohms law under constant temperature temperature or degree centigrade okay 
these are the very very important points with respect to our uh, particular questionnaire and one more important point is the current is nothing but number of charges flowing in a circuit with respect to the time taken this is what we are going to use now for our particular problem okay this is also treated as amperes where q is nothing but coulombs means nothing but a charge q means charge t means time time is always measured in seconds okay now using the same formula from the given data from the given data that is e and i electrons they have given and time they have given and the background you have to know the background as well okay i is equals to q by t so this is nothing but coulombs charge charge me is always measured in coulombs and t is measured in seconds okay but in order to get one coulomb of charge you need to have 1.602 times of 10 to the power of minus 19 electrons no sorry it's not electron in order to have one coulomb of charge uh, you need to have uh, sorry this is actually one electron one electron charge charge of one electron means how many coulombs one electron will have how much of charges means it will have 1.602 into 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs it will have this many this much of charge okay in order to get one coulomb you need to have 6.205 into 10 to the power of 18 electrons hope now you guys are very clear about the number of electrons one electron will have a charge of 1.602 1.602 into 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs similarly in order to get one coulomb of charge we need to pass 6.205 into 10 to the power of 18 electrons in a material then we will have one coulomb of charge so according to the formula i is equals to q by t where q is nothing but coulombs so in order to get coulombs what i need to do do, do is number of electrons into that particular charge number of what is the number of electrons they have given it is 5 into 10 to the power of 16 into 1 what is the one one electron charge that is 1.602 into 10 to the power of minus 19 divided by 80 seconds so guys now it is very simple you just cancel 5 1 jar, 5 1 jar, 5 5 16 jar, 30 5 6 jar, 30 okay now the remaining is what 1.602 into 10 to the power of 16 minus 19 you can write it as 10 to the power of 16 and 10 to the power of 19 you can write it as 16 minus 19 how much will remain divided by 16 is there 1.602 into 10 to the power of minus 3 by 16 okay now if you can simplify this one okay i will just write it down here or else i will write it down here only just consider this as zero okay the point point six zero two is not a big value consider it as point six hundred okay if you consider it as sixteen hundred into 10 to the power of minus 3 by 16 into when you put this as 1600 you have to put 10 to the power of 3 okay Now 16 on 16, 16 on 16, 100 remains. Now T zeros goes and here also two zeros goes off and remaining is one zero in the below and upper is 
1 into 10 to the power of minus 3 i will just erase this formula guys just i will just erasing this formula okay make clear 1 into 10 to the power of minus 3 whole divided by 10 this is what we are having now so if you consider this 1 by 10 it is nothing but 0.1 into 10 to the power of minus 3 so this you can write as 0.1 into milliamperes what is this this is current right so i is equals to 0.1 milliamperes this is what the answer is so guys i hope i have explained it well about really with respect to the background of the question area and then coming towards the question so now let us go similarly to the third question area which is nothing but what is the unit of measure of our electrical pressure or electromotive force coming towards the background background what is should be the background to answer this question to answer this question we should know the units of different quantities so if when it is a potential or voltage or emf emf means electromotive force or the electrical pressure which is nothing but potential okay all are treated as volts only keep it in mind okay when it comes to the flux it is magnetic flux it is treated as Weber's okay these are the units these are the terms okay these are the terms and it comes to the reluctance okay it is treated as ampere turns per Weber's these are the unit guys you should keep it in mind when it comes to the conductance it is treated as Siemens okay when it comes to the admittance impedance impedance is treated as ohms admittance is nothing but reciprocal of impedance which is nothing but mo conductance means Siemens okay and there is one more term called susceptance which is not also treated as Siemens okay so these are the few very important uh, very important units or the fundamentals you guys need to remember and this is one more case which is called permeance which is called as the reciprocal of reluctance nothing but what Weber's per ampere turns okay Weber's per ampere turns so guys these are the very few uh, and important units with respect to your SSA exam point of view so if you have this background you can answer this particular question very easily see what is the unit of measure of electrical pressure or electromotive force you can straight away put as volts what is the unit of amperes you, amperes is the unit of current right and ohms is the unit of resistance or impedance and watts is a unit of power okay and there is one more unit guys the unit of energy is what joules keep it in mind or in electrical unit you can call it as kilowatt hour or you can call it as watt hour okay or you can call it as ampere hour all are the units of energy okay next now coming towards what is the applied voltage on the circuit in which point in which 0.5 amps is flowing and 10 watts is generated see given data is very simple they have given the current flowing in the circuit is 0.5 amperes or you can write it as 0.5 and the power is 10 watts and they are asking us to find out the applied voltage applied voltage is how much question mark how much of volts in order to get this question 
you guys should know what are the formulas we are having i is equals to vbr is the one of the formula right and the second formula is we are having is p is equals to v square by r and p is equals to i square into r okay by using these formulas you can find out that with the voltage directly guys okay and one more formula is power is equals to voltage into current okay this is one more formula by using this formula actually you can calculate very easily so let us choose fourth equation that is p is equals to v into i and consider v is equals to p by i p given is how much 10 watts and i given is how much 0.5 so if you consider this 10 by 5 into 10 above it is nothing but 100 by 5 which is nothing but 20 20 volts is the voltage which you need to get a 5 amps 0.5 amps 0.5 amps flowing in the circuit and consuming a power of 10 watts guys okay it is as simple as like this there is a voltage source which is applied the DC and here is the bulb you guess the rating of the bulb is 10 watts and the current flowing is 4.5 amps and the voltage what we are applied is 20 volts simple okay next and what is the device which stores energy in the form of electric charges it's simple guys and when it stores electricity in the in the form of electric charges it is capacitance Resistance does not store any energy. Does not store any form of energy. Conductance, it's just the reciprocal of resistance. So, it also does not store any energy. Okay. And inductance stores energy in the form of in form of magnetic flux. flux or magnetic field okay only inductance that is l and c are the storing devices are the components or the passive components you can call it as passive components are r l and c keep it in mind these are called as passive elements okay on rest or not if the resistance if the resistance R suddenly decreases, okay, what he is saying, the resistance is suddenly decreasing in value, what will happen to the current in the circuit resistor? See, if there is a source and there is a resistor, okay, this is the current flowing, this is the voltage applied. If all of a sudden, for example, the value of resistor is decreased. What happens? First, you put the formula. I is equals to what? V by R. Okay. Now, they are asking us to find out the current. Okay. Let us go by the equation and the examples. Okay. First example, what I consider is, I will take this as 100 and I will take voltage as 50 volts and current I will find out. I is equals to V by R. V is how much? 50 and R is 100. What will be the value? 1 by 2 which is nothing but 0.5 amperes. Okay, simple. For what value? For 100 ohms of resistance. Now, what he is saying? R suddenly decreases in a value. What happens to the current? What happens to current? When R was 100, current was how much? It was 0.5 amperes. Now, when R is reduced, means reduced means I will consider it as 50 ohms for the second case and what will be the current we will find out. For 50 ohms of resistance and voltage of 50 volts, I will be V by R which is nothing but 50 by 50 which is nothing but 1 amperes. See what has happened to the current? It has increased. Means it is very simple guys. When you have some load in the home, okay, when you have some load in the home, 
the resistance is obviously higher okay the two in the circuit when you reduce that particular load resistance value the current will have to be increased that can be that can be explained just by using this formula only current is inversely proportional to the resistance as resistance decreases current value keeps on increasing but i showed you with an example guys okay so that you guys can understand very easily so now for this answer particular question the answer right answer will be increases remains unchanged no resistance has effect on current if they would have asked what is the effect of frequency on the current then i would have told not changed decreases when it decreases the current will decrease when resistance is increased when r increases only then current decreases okay this is also not correct with respect to the question fluctuates is always fluctuates but this is not the right answer which of the following circuit will have same amount of voltage drop across each of its components see we are having how many types of circuits background background of for to answer this question we are having three circuit closed circuit open circuit and short circuit in closed circuit these are the three types of circuits and another two types of circuits are series and parallel in series the current is same okay but in parallel the current differs in if you consider the voltage the voltage is different in series whereas voltage is same in parallel the other resistance might be anything okay it may be the same it might be the same values not differ okay it might be constant also okay but here the question was about which of the following circuit will have the same amount of voltage drop across each of its component same voltage drop means the voltage is same across all the components for example here is the one component here is the one component here is the one component he is saying the voltage which is there across all the three are same even the resistance value is different means this is possible only in parallel circuits okay only in parallel circuit this is possible in series the current is same guys okay next three conduct three elements have conductance g1 g2 g3 are connected in parallel their combined conductance will be how much conductance means what guys just now we discuss conductance means reciprocal of resistance okay resistance in parallel how you guys are going to do resistance in parallel in order to solve this question you guys should understand this background okay resistance in parallel means like this one resistance two resistance three resistances are there means if you treat it as r1 r2 r3 the total value of resistance rt will be 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 plus 1 by r3 so now this is 1 by rt 1 by rt is nothing but 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 plus 1 by r3 now what he is saying three elements have conductance not resistance conductance are connected in parallel same kind of circuit but it is conductance means 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 plus 1 by r3 total 1 by g 1 by rt is how much is their question okay not 1 by rt is their question their question is about gt total gt total gt in the sense nothing but 1 by rt guys 1 by rt in the sense the given value itself is 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 plus 1 by r3 means 
you have to do 1 divided by 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 plus 1 by r3 nothing but guys if you simplify this reciprocal of reciprocal will all comes to the numerator which means it is nothing but r1 i mean the 1 by g1 plus g2 plus g3 Oh, no need to no need to go in this fashion also guys okay just i will cancel all this okay i will just erase these things it makes you unnecessary confusion see now the resistance in parallel is this is the formula you guys understood this formula right 1 by RT is nothing but 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus 1 by R3. So now resistance in parallel is this much means. Similarly, the conductance in parallel is directly you can write. This is as 1 by RT means nothing but 1 by, see this is G. Conductance means G is nothing but 1 by R. Okay. When 1 by RT, you can write it as GT is equals to G1 plus G2 plus G3. It's as it is direct guys. No need to go for any other circuits. Put this as the answer. That's it. Not all the three. First three are wrong. Now coming towards another questionary. A 33 half watt resistor and a 330 ohm half watt resistor are connected across a 12 volt source. Okay. There is a 12 volt source. And a half watt resistor. This is 33 ohms half watt means 0.5 watt resistor and 330 ohms and 0.5 watts resistor. It is a rating of that particular resistor. Okay. Rating of that particular resistor. Now he is asking when the power rating is same in both the resistors, but only the resistance value is different. Which one will overheat? Overheat in the sense, overheat means what? The current is higher. Means now, if you give the voltage of 12 volts to 33 ohms and 12 volts to 330 ohms, which one will have a higher current will have the higher overheat? Simple. So now take example, not example. The guy, uh, okay, you can take it as example only. First example. Let us do it with 330 ohms. What is the formula for current? It is nothing but V by R. Voltage is how much? 12 volts for this particular resistance. So in, in parallel circuit, the voltage is same guys. Here also you get 12 volts. Here also you get 12 volts. Okay. Here also you get 12 volts. Here also you get 12 volts. Not a problem. But only thing is the current is different. Here if you get I1, here if you, get, you will get I2. So now I am calculating this the, the current flowing through the 330 ohm resistor block. Okay. 12 by 330 means how much you will get? Obviously, we will get less value, right? Because 12 by 330. Okay. Now, if you take the another value of resistance, that is 12 by 33. Only 33. Okay. Only 33. If you equate if you equate with this particular equation 12 by 33 into 1 by 10 which is nothing but how we can write 12 by 33 into 0.1 okay 12 by 33 into 0.1 is the above one but here it is 12 by 33 no need to multiply with any decimal values means which means it is say way as simple as it is guys the value of resistance as decreases the current increases so in a 330 in a 330 ohm this is a big value of resistance will have some amount of current but when resistance is reduced here it is reduced right only 33 ohms then obviously the current has to be more which means the 33 ohm resistor value will have higher current which means the current of i1 will be greater than i2 which means the 33 ohm resistor 
will overheat as simple as it is this will overheat but it is less heat less heat than 33 ohms not both nay and neither okay in general 0.0025 watt there are how i can write it as how, how what it is the value okay given value is 0.0025 watts okay if you convert it into a milliwatts or microwatts how it will be you have to put 25 into 10 to the power of minus 4 which means 250 into if i transfer one zero here i can write it as 10 to the power minus 3 so guys it means that it is of a 250 milliwatts the how much it is 250 milliwatts if it was 0 0.025 watts, then it would have been 25 into 10 to the power of minus 3. Okay. 10 to the power of minus 3, which means it is 25 milliwatts. Okay. This is not the right answer for this. This is also not. This is also not. The right answer is this one. Okay. So thank you guys for watching my video. I hope you have liked it. I liked the video. And if you really like this video, please click on the like button. Do not forget to click on the like button, which gives me an enormous amount of energy and passion to create more number of videos with coming with the very important and interesting questions and with the background of explanation. Okay. Hope if this video has been helpful for you guys, Please do not forget to subscribe to my channel so that I can make many more videos in all the coming days. Okay. Thank you guys. Please share it with all your friends and your colleagues as well as your classmates. Thanks for watching my channel and wish you all the best. See you in the next session.